Jeff Craig, I know you addressed this ad nauseum, and I know you addressed it on your pregame radio show, but can you at least summarize you know, a little bit of your frustration, but also at least can you move on now knowing that you know when the end date is for certain? Well, I mean, frustrated, you know, it, it's gone, the level of frustration has gone beyond anything I've ever experienced in almost 30 years of coaching. And really, I look back over 30 years, that's why, the reason why I got into this profession was to try to help young people and make their experiences and their lives better. Uh, unfortunately, during this scenario, as this has played out since June, um, we haven't done a good job um, as membership and as the organization that kind of heads that membership in the NCA of making a student athlete's experience better. Um, it, Micah now will have sat by the time he plays in mid-December, 47 games. 35 last year at Ohio State that he did not participate in. 12 here if you count our two um, preseason Iowa State scrimmage and lacrosse exhibition game. It's 21 months and three semesters. You find somewhere else that that has happened. This is unprecedented. And I, I can't, I have a hard time thinking that we stand up here and like I said, we did all we could do from an institution standpoint. Katie Smith, Coach Alvarez, our administration, our compliance did everything we could do. Micah did everything he could do. Um, but to have this type of, um, and, and I'm gonna go through the details of the play-by-play -play of the whole thing, but aren't we as a membership in the business of the human business, as I'll take one of the NCA's terms, of trying to make the experiences of the student athletes better? This is doing a, and the problem is with all my frustration and everybody's frustration, everybody's work that was put into this, that is irrelevant. The one that gets penalized in this the most is Micah Potter. And that's completely unfair um, to be able to have to sit this much and to, to do the things he did. He did it the right way. He stayed at Ohio State to try to finish, stay on track to graduate. He wanted to stay because his brother Noah was coming on the football team and he didn't want to make life rough for him coming in as a freshman when he was going to be there mid in January last year. But he found out it wasn't going to work. So he had to make a change. Uh, really what he didn't want to do. Um, and he did things the right way. And that's that's what's so frustrating in, the, in all the things that go on in the NCAA today and across, across college athletics. See so many negative things. Micah Potter's a quintessential student athlete. He's exactly what the NCAA should want, representing them as student athletes. Instead of using that as a, a positive message to the rest of the student athletes, you took one of your best student athletes in the country and penalized him further than what everybody else. There's, he's got a teammate that played games last year that's playing now at another institution. We played against a guy that played all of last year. Like I said, it, it, it makes, I was hoping common sense would prevail in this. Unfortunately, it didn't. And again, I, I just don't understand when we're in the business of trying to make these student athletes' experiences better. He, his clock is ticking. The rest of us will go on. And the people that are in those positions, in that committee, the NCAA staff, they obviously aren't, don't have their boots on the ground and understand the impact that this has on a young man and on his life, and on his future. Um, like I said, credit to Micah, because he's been the one that, I was so irate this afternoon when, and Micah was the one that took the news better than anybody, better than me, than our administration, our compliance. It, I just feel it was such an injustice, and I thought everything was done the right way. Um, but, like I said, it's uh, it's unfortunate. It's, it's really a shame. It, it's a shame that, um, and regardless if he makes us a better team, it's not, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with this kid's experience that's been yanked away from him, and he's getting over penalized than, than any other transfer. Jim, you said earlier in the process that you guys were given a rationale and you disagreed with it. Can you share what that was specifically now? They've stuck to their complete thing they from the beginning, that there wasn't mitigate, mitigating circumstances. I don't know, when you're told that you need to distance yourself from the program. That's not mitigating. I mean, there's a lot of ways that coaches can send messages that you're not don't want it, not wanted here anymore or in a program. Um, said he was a kid that grew up in Ohio, and it was just in, in Ohio State. That's the other thing. 
You know, Ohio State supported it, the Big Ten supported it, and obviously we had the support behind it. You got everybody, nobody resisting this, nobody resisting this on the outside. 